Just over two years ago, back in 2017, it was supposed to be one of the greatest draft classes in recent history. When it comes to hype, when it comes to expectations, there was certainly a lot of it. And not just from the top guys either, all the way down the lottery actually, many players were looked at as future stars. However, it was a slow start for some guys, including, of course, Markel Fultz, who battled a shoulder injury for the first two years in Philly, but it looks like he's finally recovered. Then there's others like Jason Tatum and Donovan Mitchell. Both of them have continued their excellent play. However, then we come to Dennis Smith Jr. and Josh Jackson, two guys who started off their careers pretty well and many fans expected them to build off of that. But that just did not happen. Instead, they went in the opposite direction and drastically fell off. Now, it doesn't even look like either of them are gonna be part of their team's rotation. In this video, I'll break down their first two years in the league so far and what's happening right now in their current situations. How's it going folks? My name's Andy and uh, let's get started. First things first, let's start with Josh Jackson the fourth overall pick of the 2017 draft. Some even had Josh Jackson going higher than that, sometimes even being put in the same category as Lonzo Ball or Jason Tatum. Jackson found immediate success dominating the 2017 NBA Summer League, and his play would continue as we transition into the regular season. For most of his basketball career, Jackson was labeled as a wild card. According to his Draft Express scouting report, he was described as, quote, an edgy, explosive, often emotional prospect with an erratic jumper and a mentality that straddles the border of intensity and instability. Jackson is a bit of an enigma. When he's at his best, Jackson looks like a potential number one pick, a star in the making. His initial NBA comparison was Andre Iguodala, as it was expected that Jackson would have a similar game. The similar role of being the primary defender on other stars, but on offense, a relentless slasher. A playmaker who does all the little things to support his team. And from the looks of it, throughout his rookie season, he certainly looked that way. Defensively, he definitely made his mark. From the eye test, he looked amazing for a rookie, playing the passing lanes, hounding others in one-on-one -on -one situations. It was quite impressive. However, just like what the scouting report said, his inconsistency and erratic play, especially with his jump shot, was an issue throughout the season. And it got even worse in his sophomore season. Additionally, he would get benched at random times, sometimes very early in the games because he wasn't performing well and the coaching staff was kind of impatient. When talking about this frustration, Jackson said, I feel that's natural as a rookie, coming in and having early struggles. But I felt I kept a strong head, stayed strong-minded, and I stayed working hard. However, his work ethic did not translate to tangible results on the floor. In his second year, the Suns already gave up on him, sending him in a trade package to the Memphis Grizzlies. Now, besides the fact that barely anyone even cared that Jackson got traded over the summer, the more surprising thing is, he was essentially a throw-in in the trade. The Suns got rid of him simply because they didn't want to pay him. A 22-year-old prospect, the fourth pick of his draft class, and yet, he wasn't even good enough to warrant an extension from the team that drafted him. In return, the Suns received Javon Carter and a 38-year-old Kyle Korver, whose contract got bought out immediately after. So, what really went wrong? This is not a normal occurrence for a former fourth overall pick. Well, just like with most things on the Phoenix Suns over the last decade, nobody really knows. However, we could probably assume what they were thinking. Jackson did get into a lot of off-court issues during his two years in Phoenix. He got fined by the organization for refusing to make a public appearance. He got arrested at a music festival in Florida trying to enter the VIP area without a pass. And then he got arrested again for running away while being handcuffed. Then he got accused of exposing his five-month-old daughter to marijuana. Combine all of those off-court issues with his lack of improvement, and you can probably guess why the Suns traded him. But what's even more surprising than all of that is, after getting traded to Memphis, Josh Jackson started off the season playing for the Memphis Hustle, their G League team. As of right now, he's not even part of the Grizzlies roster yet. He's not even in the NBA. 
While the Grizzlies claim that it'll give him more opportunities to prove himself, that's gotta be demoralizing. He went from being at the top of the draft boards to this. I mean, there's no shame in playing in the G League, many players go through it, but for the fourth pick in his third season, it's very rare to see. Next up, let's talk about Dennis Smith Jr. Now, personally, I've been watching him way more than Josh Jackson over the last few years. On the court, their problems are relatively similar, in that they're both very erratic players and you have no idea what you're gonna get. After a few missed jump shots, their respective coaches get impatient and pull them from the game. However, DSJ's situation is different in that he was kind of forced out of his own team that drafted him. Maybe forced is not the right word to use, but that's essentially what happened. After DJ's rookie season, things were looking up. He was drawing comparisons to a young Russell Westbrook and Derrick Rose. An explosive point guard with ridiculous athleticism, but also a shaky jump shot. And he still has to learn the ropes of being an actual point guard. However, in 2018, when Luka Doncic got drafted and joined the Mavs, it was quite clear within the first month of the season that it became Luka's team. Luka was the better scorer, the better decision maker, the better passer, had better handles, and overall, he was not only the better player, but also the better point guard. By the numbers, the Mavs were much better when Luka had the ball. They were much worse when DSJ ran the offense, and they were also much worse when both players were on the floor at the same time. Looking at the lineup stats in the 2018-19 season, the Mavs' most played 5-man lineup included both DSJ and Luka, and their net rating was putrid. They only had an offensive rating of 98.4, but when they replaced DSJ with Jalen Brunson, their team looked so much better. And the numbers reflect that too, and with Brunson on the floor, the Mavs had an offensive rating of 112.3. That's kinda crazy how they could just switch DSJ for Brunson, and their offense goes from the bottom of the league to the top of the league. When you look at it this way, it makes perfect sense why the Mavs traded him halfway through his sophomore season. While there were some reports of DSJ being unhappy with his new role and taking a back seat to Luka, those rumors have not been confirmed and the two of them got along fine off the court. However, there was a player who was unhappy. Kristaps Porzingis, who was still rehabbing and recovering from his torn ACL. During that time, he requested a trade from the New York Knicks. The Mavs would send DSJ to New York as the main piece of the team. Initially, his first few games with the Knicks were very good. I mean, they were still losing games, but DSJ had back-to-back -back games where he scored 25 points and then 31 points. But afterwards, it didn't take long for him to return back to his usual self. Now, in his first full season with the Knicks, it's been pretty rough. In his first three games, he only made one field goal and the New York crowd showered him in booze. No, not that kind of booze. This. In the chant of We Want Frank, he's starting here at the Garden. That's tough for a young man to hear from the home crowd. He is obviously struggling. They were mainly chants of We Want Frank, as DSJ brought the ball up the court numerous times, that's what they would chant. Knicks fans don't have the best reputation of giving their players confidence, but this was not only about DSJ. It was the accumulation of everything that happened in the last few years. All of the losing, all of the bad management, the fans are on edge. Also, keep in mind, Porzingis was an all-star before his injury and fans were expecting them to get, you know, a great deal for him in return. DSJ was expected to be the new man of the franchise, but he obviously has not lived up to it. While he is young, the Knicks have been so bad for such a long time that everyone there is getting impatient. I don't think it's fair to DSJ and how he got treated, but the truth is, he probably isn't an all-star caliber player. And he's never shown the ability to carry a team on his back for an extended period of time. I think the expectations of him are way too high and I think the pressure got to him, as his confidence got shattered. In response to all of the boos, DSJ tried to ignore them and said, All we got is us in this locker room, that's what we've got to focus on. To make matters worse, his stepmother passed away a day after the game. 
Dennis was very close to her and this broke him. It would take him a while to regain his composure as he separated himself from the team for about two weeks. In addition to all of this, the Knicks point guard situation is quite awkward. They have three young point guards who are all fighting for minutes, trying to prove themselves. If DSJ cannot get it together, Coach Fisdale can just replace him in the lineup with Frank or Peyton. When he was asked about the Knicks point guard rotation and where DSJ fits in, that's the battle. You're trying to stay competitive in the game and at the same time, you're trying to give Smith enough time to fight his way into rhythm. But ultimately, I always pick trying to win over that right now. So it's unclear of what the future holds or if Smith is gonna even remain a New York Nick. Nothing is certain. This was a guy who used to be a super hyped up prospect. Some even believed he had the highest ceiling out of every point guard of the 2017 draft class. However, his career has been a roller coaster with zero stability. While I'm still pulling for him to succeed, you never know what's gonna happen in New York. Stability is the opposite of what you'd expect out of this organization. And that's all folks, that sums up the story of what happened with Dennis Smith Jr. and Josh Jackson. It's been rough so far in the early years of their career and it's hard to say if they'll ever bounce back. We've seen many top tier prospects never fulfill their expectations, but hopefully these two don't fall into that category. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on these two players and what's your opinion on their situation so far. I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.